Who the sun has got the hat on? Hip 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 hooray! The sun has got his hat on and is coming out to play. Hey PC4, welcome to Monday. How amazing is it on a Monday? I've always loved Mondays. I've said Mondays too many times. Hey, how windy was it at the weekend? It was windier than Mr. Windy who has just won the windiest wind competition about two hours ago. That's how windy it was. My um, my wheelie bin was flying across the street. Uh, yeah. I had to be chasing after it. It was crazy. Yeah. But um, hope you're all well. Hope you're enjoying um, the wind. And <laughs> Hope you're looking after each other as usual, and thank you for your hard work last week. Let's just get on with it, shall we, and see what kind of activities we've got um, to do this today. Okay, hi. Hmm. Still wearing the same shirt. Need to do that. That's on my to-do list. Hi. Okay, we are looking at the spell spells. Um, as always, it's always on some dog um, spelling as well. So if you want some extra spelling practice that's where you do it in the old sum dog yeah um there's also other things that you can do there's the 50 tasks that is still on your files if you want to do something like that yeah i'm kind of trusting you a little bit that you're you're doing your spelling but i'm i'm seeing that you're you're writing down quite a lot of it and you're doing quite a, but if you want some extra practice with it there, there is stuff there. Always ask me. Okay, P3s. We are looking at revising and revisiting previous spelling things. So not from this year, but from P1 and P2 we're looking at. So we are looking at the A sound and the E sound. Now, these are called vowel digraphs. And they're called vowel digraphs because um, they are two letters that make one sound, if that makes sense, a sound of one letter. Let's have a look at it. So it's A as in paint, paint, and it's green as in green, green. So we're looking at A and E words. The same thing as usual, I would like you to see if you can sound, it's the sound we're looking for today, not so much the spelling, the sound of that, yeah, so A, that A sound, what other sound can you get, an E, so A and E, but spelled like that above, okay, if that makes sense. If you go on the um, links, you'll see that I've put a video to, um, is a man that's called Mr. Thorn Does Phonics. And um, he, you will find other words there, but he gives you a more detailed version of it as well. And it's how I learned phonics with Mr. Thorn um, when I was in primary one. Not me personally, teaching primary one. Um, and it's A and E. He says it a little bit more English. A uh, and U, but because we're from Scotland and we're from Edinburgh, we say it a little bit different. So the way you say paint, E, yeah, and E, okay? Thank you. P4s, we're looking at prefixes, so things that come before the word that we can add. So this week we're looking at none and this. So we're looking for none as in non-fiction, yeah? Is there any other words that we can do? and disappear. Now the word before you put non and dis on must be a word already, if that makes sense. Yeah. Have a look. Five non words and five dis words. Put them together. I've also given you an extra challenge, P3 and P4 this week, that once you have got your spelling words, I would like you to put them in a sentence. So I want 10 sentences written with your spelling words there. If you're not too sure what your word means, 
you know, look up dictionary.com. If you've got a dictionary at home, you can find out what the word means. It's a bit like um, what we were doing with um, Vocabulary Ninja. Um, so write in the sentence for each of your spelling words. Excellent. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so your stories last week were Poppy and Jasper. I haven't had everyone's first draft back yet, but the people who have, thank you very much. And everybody in the class, we need to work on this a little bit, which is building a sentence and making sure that we are making a good quality sentence up, okay? So if we've got that sentence here at the top, Mr. Leonard walked into a building. It's an okay sentence. It doesn't tell us much about it, doesn't it? So if we have, we can put that at the start of it. The friendly and caring Mr. Leonard walked. Yeah? The friendly and caring. I've already added one, two, three, four words on there. Woo, look at that. That was cool, wasn't it? Then we can add an adverb. The friendly and caring Mr. Leonard walked quickly. You can add another. If you add, you can change the sentence depending on that adverb. The friendly and caring Mr. Leonard walked slowly into the dangerous and derelict building. Doesn't that say something different about that sentence? Well, so we've went from Mr. Leonard walked into a building. We've added some nouns, we've added some adjectives, we've added some adverbs. But this is why I keep on telling you to add adjectives and discuss. Look at that sentence. The friendly and caring Mr. Leonard walked quickly into a dangerous and derelict building. That sentence has just totally changed that story completely. So if you've completed your first draft, I want you to look through your first draft and say, where can I add some adverbs in? Remember, adverbs usually end in L-Y, slowly, quickly, yeah? Um, and adjectives describing, what can I describe? Maybe you want to add a sentence completely describing. Maybe you want to add a whole paragraph describing what the building looks like or what something looks like, the character looks like. But I want you to see if you can up-level your work, first draft people, by doing that. If you haven't completed your first draft, this is a great place to start. So looking through last week's work, getting that Poppy and Jasper thing, it's still in your files, looking at it and writing your first draft of continuing the story. So it was last Tuesday. Have a look through, the assignment is still up there. You don't need to look at the video, you just need to look at the files attached and you can do that. I would like everybody on here to make sure that they've got a story by the end of this term, please, that I can pass on. That would be amazing. So, here's Poppy and Jasper there. Use Build a Sentence to uplevel your story, make it longer and more interesting with lots of adjects, adv term, adverbs and excitement. First draft people and other people are writing, starting to write a story, if you're reading your story and you're bored, it's not a good story. Yeah, add some excitement. If you're bored reading it, get Poppy and Jasper to go into a time warp or something. Or, you know, get them to suddenly change into bears. Anything is possible. It's up to you. Use your imagination. And make that story extra exciting. Thank you. So, we've got a few people on Pen Path Schools. I was really excited to see some people um, I think it was Emily and Lena who started talking to some people in, in different countries about, oh, what was that about again? Is it about a giant fish tank? Is that right? Or something about a clam opening and shutting? Yeah, it sounds really good. And But I've noticed on some of your profiles that you haven't created a bio yet. And some of you, I know Ralph, and I think Hamish has got a little character um, on there. Make sure you've got a photo on there. Um, 
not of you, of one of the characters. You'll see my one as well. And create a bio, so a biography about yourself. Some information about yourself. Obviously, P34. Don't be putting out your home address and your phone number or anything that is personal. Just something that you're interested in, hobbies, excitement. And some and other people will be more willing to have a wee chat with you around there, around the world. And yeah, remember to be safe. Obviously don't. Now, I'm on there and if I see anything obviously inappropriate or something that um, you're giving too much details away, I will delete it. But I will tell you when you delete it as well. And yeah, just I hope you enjoy it and I hope you can see it. I'm going to have a wee look at it um, today to see what else we can, can have a wee chat with. Going to start chatting to some teachers on it as well, which would be really good fun. And this is a way just to keep your literacy going and find out about other places in the world. And um, it'll be very interesting to hear um, what other places in the world are like and how they are coping with this um, with this situation we're in at the moment. It'll be really interesting. So I. Missed it, but last weekend, just that weekend, it's just passed. It was Ramadan and um, Eid. So, as part of religious and moral education this year, we're learning all about all religions, um, as well. And yeah, I I missed it. Um, to to say, but I hope um anybody that was celebrating it had a good one and um. I'm not sure that you'll be listening to this just now, but if you are, um, it would be great to find out how it was um, and what you got up to. And on the files on attached to this, there is a video from BBC Class Clips and it's about someone called Sarah. And Sarah celebrated it and she has... Um, sent a little video about it. So a little challenge for you today is to create a little poster profile presentation about Ramadan and Eid. What is it? Now we spoke briefly about the five pillars. I don't know if you remember that um, throughout the year. And so just update yourself with it and just find, find out what it was all about if you don't know already. Excellent. <coughs> so, we're on to numeracy and maths. Now, numeracy, I'm doing little challenges, of course. Thank you for your enriched stuff and your coded M100 square. That was really good. Um, it, was, it was quite simple once you got the code um, bit of it, but at the start, I bet some of you were sitting there going, eh, what? <laughs> but it was quite an interesting code um investigation once you got it. Now, I would like you to do number two, keep going with that home learning wall up there. I'm not seeing much evidence on it on Teams and I'm hoping that you keep on going with it. Um, we're going to see if we can start looking at seal groupings and seal things but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do it um, before before the end of session. Um, so we'll see if we can do it, but I'm not promising. One of the part of the numeracy things that we were going to work on this term is looking at contemporary mathematicians, which means mathematicians that are working in the field just now. Because I think when we speak about maths and mathematicians, we're always thinking about um, that kind of man in the lab, um, thinking about you know, adding up and doing things, but there's lots of different maths careers that you can go into. Now, on the 12th of May, this was Women, Women in Maths Day. So on the link, I've sent you the link on the assignment, um, there is a, a link to World Maths Day website, and they're celebrating by um, speaking to a couple of women who are mathematicians in and working as mathematicians, and it's very interesting to see um, what they do. I won't give you any spoilers. So I would like you to 
just write a quick profile about one of the women in the link. So it's completely up to you if you want to do a, a bubble diagram or a, a mind map. If you want to do a drawing, you can do. If you want to do a dance, that'd be very strange, but you can do if you want. Um, but it's completely up to you how you want to present it. We're coming to a point in literacy just now that you've had quite a lot. We've done quite a lot of posters, we've done stories, we've done reports, we've done um, articles, we've done leaflets, we've done lots of things. So now is the time for you to say, what do I like to do the best? What is the best way that I can provide this information? Okay? Computational thinking. Remember, I was talking a little bit about this. Was it last week or the week before? And it was barefoot computing. Well, they've put some mini missions up there, and there's a few mini missions about algorithms and coding and talking about um, different vocabulary, and they're really good fun. And it's all stuff that you don't need a computer so much for. It's all things that you can do without a computer, so it's called unplugged computing. And it's all things that you can do at home, that you don't need any special equipment for. So I would like you on the assignments just to click on that link and look through the list. Which one would you like to do? Um, I'm going to try and do one today um, as well. Um, hopefully Hannah will want to do it as well. Um, but we will, we will see, and it'll be good to find out a little bit about um, what you're doing and show me a video or um, send some pictures or you can write a presentation about it if you want. Um, but choose one of them and let me see. Brilliant. Um, just a quick <coughs> excuse me, reminder that Kids Invent Stuff deadline is today. So... If you wanted to apply for it, um, I think it's lockdown inventions this term. It needs to be by um, five o'clock and double check that time um, today. So if you wanted to do something, get online, um, find out what it is, watch the video, complete it and send it in for your chance for your invention to get made. Really good stuff. And people, that is it for Monday the 25th of May. Now, I am about today, um, so please do keep those questions coming in. Um, I will be on video chat at some point today, probably about 11 o'clock, um, but I will let you know. And we will and do come in if you've got any questions or have a chat and... Or if you just want to tell me some jokes, um, yeah, and keep being awesome and keep going with that work. Me and Mr Taylor was talking about how amazing some people are and just keeping that work up and yeah, it's going to really pay off. So all is left for me to say is Stevens. Good. Oh,